You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Interview. Good afternoon. This is Greg Gloria, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Today we take another journey into a problem that startups and, quite frankly, most companies have and CEOs have to deal with these days: a distributed global workforce. Uh, we will go into depth. Uh, interview with Marlo Rausch, uh, CEO of Animation Vertigo, who runs a company of uh, distributed uh, global work teams. So a little bit about Marla. She's a Filipino-American businesswoman who founded Animation Vertigo 10 years ago when she saw a need in the film, gaming, motion capture, and technology industries to hire and manage stable teams of talented artists. Prior to establishing uh, Animation Vertigo, uh, Marla worked freelance in Spectrum Studios and Sony Computer Entertainment America as a motion capture tracker. And uh, she holds a bachelor degree in mass communications from the University of Philippines, UOP to us Filipino Americans and Filipinos. And uh, Marla's also a member of Motion Capture Society and the International Game Developers Association. So, anyway, good afternoon, Marla. Welcome to Nerd Soccer Live from Los Angeles. Hey, Greg, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> doing much better. Uh, thank you. Uh, anything that I left out about yourself that you want to tell the Nerd Soccer audience? No, no, not at all. I think you covered everything quite thoroughly. Thank you so much. That was a tongue twister, and you did really well. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I got to thank your coffee people for that, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. This is so, yeah. so much fun. Okay, good. Uh, so let's get into the tips of how to run a company with a distributed uh, global workforce. So the first one up, uh, find a trusty and dependable manager. So let's talk about that. Well, it, I think that this is a very start of every company, right? You, when you hire people, when you look for people to, to work with, when you're even the very basic of just trying to hire somebody to work in the same company, you want to know that you're sharing the same values, you're sharing, sharing the same work ethic. That when you talk about your vision, they see it and they share it with you. So having somebody that you can trust to know that they would lead the company while you're 8,000 miles away, let's say, that they can lead the company into the direction that you want it to go to, um, that's very important. And making sure, of course, that you find these people from, I think it's, a, it's where personal goes with the business, right? You try to find these people who are friends of yours, who are people you've known for years, that uh, friends, family, although some would say family might not be the best place to go to, but... Um, Knowing who they are, I think, is the best way to go to to start. So, so you know, at, uh, let's talk about your company real quick. At Animation uh, Vertigo, you know, you started over ten years ago, and it sounds like uh, you know you learned this through some trial and error, right? Like you said, it's a trial and error thing. You try to try to work out with somebody who's a friend of yours and see how that goes, and you realize that you're really good friends, but not probably the best business partners. And then you go the other end where, oh, hey, they really share the same vision. They really want to do what you're doing, and let's work together. But then you realize, oh, hey, they really want to do what you're doing. And they really want to do it on their own, not really with you. So mm -hmm. that's a whole different thing. And then you go to the middle, which is there are people that you know, there are people that you trust, and you can work together, and you, they share in the same vision and things like that. And I'm lucky to be to have somebody like that right now, Paul Campbell, who's running my company in the Philippines, and he's handling this really well because we share uh, the same vision for the company and we have the same type of work ethic. So he doesn't drive me insane, and I don't drive him insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. So he's a he's a trustworthy and dependable manager. I see. Well, let's move to the next one, which is really. Uh, part of this trust thing that you just talked about, about allowing your manager to handle the day-to-day -day operations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, when you trust somebody, you can't say that I trust you, but wait, let me watch over your shoulder and see what you're doing every single time, right? You want to make sure that when you trust them, you let them go to, to, do, what you're, to do what they're good at doing, because uh, chances are when you trust them and you, you hired them in your company, they probably know what they're doing. They're probably a talented person. You didn't just hire somebody off the street that you knew, you know, a drinking buddy, let's say, and, uh, and, and had them join the company. They probably have the skill set you need. They probably have a really good uh, a grasp of what you're trying to do. So let them go. Let them do what you hired them to. Let them do what you wanted them to do. And take your step back. That way they get to do what they need to do, and you get to do what you're good at doing. 
Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. I know. I I've been in situations where they hired me to do a high level thing, and they were they were just uh, micromanaging me to death. So I totally yeah. understand that that aspect. So let's move to number three, which is open and regular communication. Uh, I guess with this manager and um, and other people, right? Yeah, for sure. Because um, there's it's one thing to know the person and. Um, you know, have that first interview or first conversation and say, here you go, here's the rain, you you drive it. And it's another thing to where, well, let's have a, a stop, a stop place where we can go sit down and say, okay, where are we now? How are we doing? Is there anything that we need to change? Is there anything that we need to, to um, look into? Um, constant and open communication makes it easy for, uh, for the CEO and the manager to manage uh, the company without, you know, miscommunication going on or uh, misunderstandings happening or, um, you know, you wake up suddenly, you look over and you're like, hey, what happened to my construction company? It's now a video game company. What happened? You know? So there's no weird surprises. Um, so working in that direction, the make sure that you're working towards the same goals. You set up regular meetings. You set up regular calls. You have um, regular visits, so that it's still, despite the distance, still a solid and united company. Yeah, you know what? A lot of uh, my clients who are startups, uh, they're the CEOs and entrepreneurs. You know, one of the struggles they have is, um, you know, going, trying not to be too bureaucratic and documenting every little word yeah. to, to. Not not documenting anything. So I, I, how how do you guys kind of handle that? Do you just kind of like make sure that you know they understand what you're saying, and then you 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 just see what happens, or how how do you guys how do you handle that? Well, there's a few ways we do that. So we have our our meetings, which is you know my well my manager and I have our meetings every week, and then there has the meetings that happen when there's something crucial or critical going on, and then there are those visits that I do, which is every quarter I come over and you know, have a discussion, you know, maybe it's the time that we have our planning session, maybe it's the time that we have a post-mortem on a project that we just did. But then everything that we do, we also make sure that we send an email or any documentation, something that would just make basically what I consider a reminder of what we're doing. Uh, it's also a way to save time, you know. You want to send an agenda, you want to send minutes, you want to send, you know, a confirmation that this is what we're going to be doing. And they can reply back and say, yes, I understand. That is what we are doing. You know, uh, something similar to when your teacher tells you when you're young, you know, this, uh, make sure you erase the, 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 the blackboard. What are you going to do? Erase the blackboard. So it, it makes, it makes the, it, you make sure that then everybody kind of is on the same page. Yeah, no, I think um, it's what you just described is kind of driving accountability within your organization as well. Exactly, uh, yeah. Move to the next one. Uh, maintain a presence with distributed work teams. You kind of talked about that earlier. That you kind of go back and forth. But how do you do that? Um, it's something like the same way what you do with clients. I think it's it's an important thing that you do with your team as well. Um, phone calls and emails they they go until a certain point. They, you may get to know somebody by phone calls and emails, but it just doesn't make that. If there's a lot of miscommunication can happen. Because things get lost in that, you know, in that little one-liner that you just send. That you know, uh, you know, do it. Where you were just sleepy and you decided to send that little email that says just do it. Yeah. It suddenly comes across as, oh hey, see, she's really upset with me, and I'm now needing to do this because you know something happened. There is that personal, face-to-face, -face, get to know you. Let's see how this works, so that we know how we understand each other thing going on. So what I do is every quarter I meet with the team, I meet with my managers, mm -hmm. I meet with the supervisors because this is our way to uh, do a couple of things. Aside from, you know, make sure that we're we're united in that in that feeling of, of being a team and they know you. The other part of it is is it's almost a motivational thing. Uh, you know, um, they work they all work so hard with all the projects and everything that I can come in to discuss the broader view, the okay, so hey, look at what happened. This is what we worked on. This is the project that we did. Look at the outcome. It it brings into view, hey, what we're doing on a day to day. Suddenly, you see the bigger picture. 
and that always is kind of uh, it, it helps motivate people to remember what it is that they're doing and remember what it is that they they enjoy about animation and motion capture and um, gaming, for example. Oh, interesting. So so you go back there every quarter and you you try to uh, you know interact with them. Is that is that is that in different ways, like you're saying? Yes, absolutely. So we uh, we work together to. Um, either have a production day, for example. A production day is basically a way for us to, as a team, there's 50 of us, as a team we can sit down and share the knowledge that we've had in the last year. Mm -hmm. If there's new technology that we have to talk about, I can stand up there and discuss this new technology that's coming in. Hey, there's this facial software package that we all need to understand now. Um, it also gives us an opportunity to um, correct some things when you're doing postmortems, for example, mm. trying to get that, um, trying to get the understanding of where did we go wrong, how did we, where was the weakness in this, in this thing, um, and then also at the same time during crunch time. I love it sometimes when I'm there during crunch time, which is that time when you're like 18 hours, uh, seven days a week, and everybody's you know pulling their hair out. Being able to be there, even to share a small moment of you know camaraderie, sharing that moment of you know yeah I know where you're going, we're going to get through this. That is that small moment is already worth 10, 15, 20 emails even in one day, and I think that's why it's worth always coming out to visit. Yeah, and you know that's why you know th that number four was you know you just kind of explained that a little bit is maintaining a presence with your teams and. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't just like you said, email. I think we talked offline that you know, it isn't just email, and it isn't just you know, being there 100, you know, 100 days out of the year, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's a combination of that, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Go to number five. Uh, we kind of just skipped around a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> stay on top of the newest software of tools that keep team members organized and close even when they're physically apart. So how do you do that as a CEO? Because there's so many tools out there for that they claim is great for <laughs> organization, automation of processes. I mean, you know, I, I see them all, you know, from the oh, enterprise yeah. level down to the, the app level, right? So how do you oh, do yeah. that? Well, that, that's, that's the fun thing, right? There's, uh, t today we're living in a world where this is so easy to do. We can. There's so much. There's so much technology available on your phone, on your iPad, on your you know whatever technology you're using, and you can you know utilize these things. People are thinking up of ways that will make this type of work environment possible, easier, faster, and you, trying to find that out. Uh, the, trying to find it out is easy because you, all you need to do is you know go to a convention and talk to one person and he'll tell you, oh, listen to these five different apps I'm now using. Um, it's more of the, well, which of this 15 million apps out here right now would work best for us? Which one of these would serve our purpose aside from being able to communicate with each other and get us closer and save you know save money and time? But which one of these also support the ability to keep security, make sure that none of the information we have is ever accidentally released, that there would be no bug that would suddenly render our servers dead, you know, these sort of things. So you talk to a lot of your friends and peers and other uh, people in the industry who's using these uh, things. You do a little bit of a test first, you know, you have a reliable IT person here and there. but I would suggest definitely go out there, see what's available, check it out. Um, clients also have their own um, tools that they love to use, and you know, sometimes it's a matter of okay, checking it out and then realizing it would work for me. Um, yeah. On our end, yeah, on our end as well, we also develop our own systems inside, like a, you know, our own database systems that makes it easy for us. To figure out what our clients is, we have so many. We have a, a, a lot of clients, and so making sure that we're organized in that sense is very important. Okay, let's move on to number six. Let's keep things in perspective when managing a workforce. So, you know, wh what do you exactly mean by that? I I like to hear from you what you guys do at Animation Vertigo. Well, I think at the end of the day, we all recognize what it is that we're doing. Whether it's working in one building, 
whether it's working from across the street, whether it's working like us in Animation Vertigo across an ocean. At the end of the day, you're talking about one team, one company, one goal. And keeping that in perspective, and you don't get lost in the, um, in the technology the haven that there is when there's when you're talking about you know oh how can we make this better how can we communicate more how what kind of technologies can we use how do we make our team more efficient you know from 8000 miles away where keeping perspective what i mean by that is keeping your eye on the goal making sure that you're what you're doing is really just reaching for that one goal regardless of how many teams you're talking about and that perspective, I think, will help people be um, successful in managing the companies, whether or not you know it's just another city, another town, or another country. Animation Vertigo has managed to um, keep this going on for about 10 years. And I think that, um, hopefully, with the way we're going, we can continue to do more. Well, that's great. No, I appreciate that. I think, uh, you know, I, I, I I think all these tips are really good for like the startup audience that uh, mm -hmm. the young talker audiences, and you know I think you you've you've captured a lot of it, and thank you for explaining that. So we're gonna go ahead and close off the interview, and thanks for the MBA, which is I call Marla's business advice. So, <laughs> so uh, thank so you. Anyway, so anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, close off the interview. Anyway, uh, how can listeners get a hold of you and get to know about more about Animation Vertigo? Well, we're on uh, our website, www.animationvertigo.com. We're on Facebook, like everybody else, and LinkedIn. So um, reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Love to know more. If you have any questions, love to um, help out any way we can. Cool. Well, anyway, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, this was Gray Gloria, a.k.a. Social Gray, on Twitter for the Nerd Soccer Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful out there. Thanks again, uh, Marla. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. Today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.